Hey everyone, welcome to this video where I'm going to be using a socket connection to send an image from a client to a server. I'm going to be using Java Swing for the um, simple GUI, but over here is the server. So if I run it and I'm using IntelliJ, you can see it starts here, then I run the client. Here is the image. I want to send the image to server when I click this button. It's waiting for the image, so if I click it, there, you can see the image has been received by the server and it was sent over a socket or TCP connection. So to start this application, the first thing I'm going to build is the client. And so I'm going to create a Java class. I'm going to call it client. I'm going to make the main method so I can run it. And so to connect to a machine, because we're going to be connecting to a server, what we need to do is we need to make a socket connection. Basically what a socket does is it provides the communication mechanism between two computers using a transmission control protocol or TCP. And so this is done with the socket class in Java called socket. And um, so a client program, basically what happens is it creates a socket on its end of communication and then attempts to connect to the server. And what a socket connection really means is that two machines have information about their network location and the TCP port that they are uh, communicating over. And so then to communicate through these sockets, you're going to be using streams for both input to both input and output data. And so this is, as I said, this is represented with the socket class and we're just going to do new socket. And so it takes two arguments because it needs their IP address, which I'm going to be using localhost because it's my computer. And then I'm just going to use my favorite port, 1234. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to print uh, connected to server when this is completed. And so as I stated earlier, um, I'm going to be using Java Swing for the GUI in this um, application. And so whenever you create a GUI with Java Swing, you'll need a container for your application. And basically this is a JFrame and it's what holds all your elements, be it text, pictures, and etc. So I'm just going to create a new JFrame. Sorry, JFrame. And what goes in here is what you want to appear at the top of the um, image. And so I'm going to just have client at the top. And then, um, so this is the container that I'm going to put all the elements in, like the button that I click. And um, Java Swing applications can be run on any system that supports Java. So if you have Java set, you should be good. And then I'm just going to set the size. I'm going to set the size to 400 width by 400 height. And then the next thing that's important to do is set default close operation. I'm going to do jframe.exit on close. And what this basically means is that when um, you're in an application and you click that red X at the top right corner, it will shut down the program as well as just closing the GUI window. Now the next thing that we're going to be doing is um, we need to make the image that I want to send to the server. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the image icon class. And what an icon is in Java Swing is basically it's a fixed size picture. So it's a picture that has a fixed size and um, you can make an icon with the image icon class or the image icon class makes an icon from a, um, a GIF, a JPEG or a PNG image. And so I'm just going to do new image icon and one of the arguments it takes is the location of the file that you want to send. And so this here is the location of the image that I'm going to be using. You can see it's in my downloads folder. And so basically what this does here is it's just going to create a fixed sized picture from um, this PNG image that I'm going to be placing in this Java frame. So now what I'm going to be using is a um, JLabel, which is something in Java Swing. I'm going to name it JLabel pick. And a J, J label can be used to house a uh, short string or an image icon or even both. And so what I'm going to be using it in this instance is I'm going to be holding the image icon so that it can be displayed in the um, J frame. And the next thing I'm going to be adding is a um, J button, which is basically used to create a label button. And then when you click on it, you can perform an action you want. So new J button, I'm going to type it send image to server. So when we click this button, it's what we want to send when we want to send the picture to the server. Let me group these together. And so when we add these actually to the J frame, what we want to do is, so this adds them, and we also want to add some border layouts. We want to decide where they get placed, and we'll do center for the image, and we'll do J frame dot add um, button, and we want to add that to the south or the bottom of the container. And then of course, to actually have the J frame shown, we're going to do jframe.set visible to true. And this will make it so you can actually see the jframe. Now that we've got everything showing, we want to add some functionality. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add functionality to the button. And to do that, use the method add on action listener. And it takes the argument in action listener. And so 
Um, and action listener is basically uh, notified whenever you click the button. And that's why we pass it in here. So when this button is clicked, it'll notify us. And then um, action listener is also a functional interface. So it, what it means is it is a interface that contains one, only one abstract method. And so whatever we want to happen when we click this button, we will type in the action performed um, method right here. In this action perform method, we want the image to be sent to the server. The program is now going to get a little more interesting. So what we're going to be working with here are um, now streams. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an output stream um, equals new or sorry equals socket dot get output stream. And so what an what a stream is is basically an endless flow of data. And um, a stream is always connected to a data source or a destination like a file, a network connection, or a memory buffer. And here. Um, the source is our client socket, and that's why we're getting the output stream from the socket, and the destination will be the server socket where we will read the input from. And this is because you can either read from a stream or write to a stream. And um, what we're going to do with the input stream is you write to input, you write to output streams and you read from input streams. And so the output stream's destination um, is where all the data written to the output stream will eventually end. And so this will be the socket, which is connected to localhost and 1234. So this is where we will be writing everything. And um, output stream is basically the base class for everything to do with output streams. So now we're going to be using something to um, increase the efficiency of our application. And what that is, is we're going to be using a buffer. So a buffered output stream, it's a subclass of the output stream. And so what it does is it wraps the output stream that we've made. So this output stream that we got from the socket, we're then going to write it, wrap it in a buffer. And what this means is that all bytes written to this buffered output stream will first get buffered inside an internal byte array and then they will all get flushed to this underlying output stream here when the buffer is full. And flushed basically just means emptying it out, and here um, the client socket of course is our output stream, so it'll empty it out to the output stream and it'll get sent to the um, server. And what we want to send is the byte data of the image. Now we want to retrieve the image that is from the image icon that we have in Java Swing. And so basically what an image is in Java is it's a superclass for all um, image classes that represent graphical images. And the way to do that is we're going to do image equals image icon and get image. So we return the image and now we can um, use this to um, send it as a buffered image which is a subclass of the image class. So let's create the buffered image. So buffered image. Name it buffered image. And so what a buffered image is, it's basically used to handle and manipulate image data. And so it consists of a color model and a raster image of data. So basically what it means is it describes an image with an accessible buffer of image data that you can manipulate and work with. And so what a color model is exactly is it's an abstract class that encapsulates the methods for translating um, a pixel value to color components. So like red, green, blue, and also an alpha component where alpha component is um, how opaque an image is. So zero meaning it's transparent and one meaning it's opaque. And so this is because in order to uh, render an image to the screen, the pixel values must be converted into color and alpha components. On the other hand, the raster class, what it does is it represents an, a rectangular array of pixels. And so what a raster basically, um, it defines the pixels occupying a particular rectangle area on a, of a plane, a flat two-dimensional plane. And so all buffered image objects have an upper left corner of zero, zero, which you can consider the start of the raster. And so any raster used to construct enough, a buffered image must therefore have a minimum x value of 0 and a minimum y value of 0. So now let's create this buffered image. And to do that, I'm just going to do new buffered image, see what arguments it takes. It takes a width, which I'm going to use the image, because it's the image that we want to write to it. I'm going to do image.getWidth, and it wants a image observer. I'm going to pass that as null. And then it wants, um, then for the height, I'm going to do image.getHeight. Once again, pass uh, null we don't want to use an image observer and then I'm going to do the last thing is buffered image dot um, type in RGB so basically what an image observer is that you can pass into get width and get height is what it does is it basically tracks you can use it to track the loading or um, yeah, the loading of an image that you are sending over a network, and that's usually what it is used for. We are not going to be using it in this case. And also over here, buffered image dot type, you're just setting the type of the image for its RGB values. You can have RGB here, which I know will give the buffer a black background, but you can also use ARGB to give it a transparent background if you don't want it to be seen when the image is written into it. Now the class we're going to be working with is the graphics class. 
And so graphics, what it basically allows you to do is it allows you to draw things. And what we're going to do is we're going to do get this graphics image from buffered image dot create graphics. And so with graphics, you can do things like you can draw an image, which is what we're going to be doing. You can draw a line. You can draw a polygon. So basically what it's done is used to draw stuff into the buffer. And so right now our buffer is empty, but we don't want it to be empty. We want to draw an image into it. And this is the image that we want to send. And so each graphics object basically uses system resources that need to be released just like streams as well. So, but, so what we're going to be doing is we'll do draw image. The argument it takes is first the image, which we've named image, and we'll just pass it like that. Then we're going to pass uh, zero for the x value, zero for the y value, because we want it to be in the upper left corner of the raster. And the image observer, we're just going to do null, which would be to like track its loading progress. And we're just not, we're going to ignore that for now. And now we're going to do graphics.dispose because we want to get free up those resources that we've been using. Now what we're going to be doing is what I would consider probably the most important line of code that we're going to be writing. And so we're going to be using the image.io class. And basically what it is, it's a utility class that contains convenience method, convenient methods for um, performing simple encoding and decoding. So basically it's a class to convert information or data into a particular form that you want. And so what it does is it writes um, whatever image we give to it to a specific stream. And so what we want it to do is it writes a rendered image. Our rendered image is going to be our buffered image. And then it takes the format. So the format name is, you can see up here, we used a PNG. So I'm going to type PNG and then the stream that we want to send it to. And so we're going to send it to the buffered output stream that we made here, which will then, when it's full, be flushed the underlying socket output stream there, which will end up at the server. And so what you, the thing you should notice, though, is that this class does not close the stream, so we still need to do buffered output stream close, and we also need to close the socket as well. And this will close, closing the buffered output stream will also close the underlying output stream here and so we can release the resources that are not being used. So this is it for the client. The only thing that we need to do now is we need to add um, our catch clauses and do our error collection. So I'm gonna do, I think most of these are input output exceptions. So if I just do a catch trace here, e.print stack trace, um, the error is because the action event is also titled e. So let me just call it event, which we're not gonna be using anyway. And then also we have this here. I'm just going to add this to the method signature to make it easy. But so this is the client that we've made. So now we're going to be working on the server. So now let's build the server. And so this is a separate pro project in IntelliJ. This isn't the same one. And so I'm just going to create another Java class. And I'm going to name it server. And then let's add the main method so we can run it. And so we're going to use J Java Swing again just to build everything. So I'm just going to basically do what I did with the um, the client and just type in everything. So here's just a quick run through of what I did is I made a JFrame with the title server, which will be at the top left corner. I set the size to 400 by 400 pixels. Um, the default close operation, so if we exit out of the GUI, it also ends the program. Um, I've made a text label that will just say waiting for client. I've added it to the frame, which of course is the container. And I made the second optional argument to border layout.south. So it'll, that means it'll be at the bottom of the JFrame. And then I've set the JFrame to visible so it can be seen. This program will be fairly similar to the client program, except for one of the facts here is we're going to be using a server socket. And um, we're going to name it uh, just server socket equals new server socket. And it'll be, once again, my favorite port, 1234. And so this is basically um, what this does is it wait, server socket waits for requests to come in over the network. And so it listens on the port number that you specify, 1234. And we use this port because the client is going to be attempting to connect to this port. And so we want to have the same port on the server. And so the way to actually get a connection is we're going to make a socket object and we'll do server socket.accept. And so what this does is it, it waits. So it's a waiting method. So it won't pass pass here, move past this line of code until there has been a connection. And once there is a connection, it returns it as a socket so that we can connect to the client because we know that the client and the server communicate by writing to and reading from the socket or what, in other words, they write to an output stream and read from an input stream. So because we have to talk with streams, what we need to do is, so a stream represents an ordered stream of bytes. And because we're going to be receiving data from um, the client, we want to use an input stream. So we're going to do input stream, input stream equals socket dot get input stream. 
And so this is how we can read the information from the uh, client and what they've sent. And then to make it more efficient, we're going to do a buffered input stream. It's the same thing as on the client, but instead of an output stream, it's an input stream. And we're going to pass the input stream in here. So this basically once we'll have a buffer, an internal buffer that will fill up with bytes and make the whole program more efficient. So now here's arguably the most important line of code that we're going to be using, and that's to actually retrieve the image that we want to display from the client. And so to do that, we're going to be using the utility class image.io again, and we're going to be using read. And what we're going to be reading from, of course, is the input stream. But we have wrapped that in a buffer so it'll, to make it more efficient, so we're going to be reading from the buffered input stream. And this is, will be the image that we actually want to display. And so, of course, we know that this here does not actually close the stream, so we have to explicitly close that because we're done with it, which will also close the underlying input stream. And then we also want to close the socket. So close that. And now we just need to add everything. So we're going to do a JLabel, call it JLabel pick because this will house the picture that we want to have. Um, and it takes a, of course, you know, it takes an icon, a tex text, or both. So we're going to do an icon, we're going to do new image icon and pass in the buffered image. And next we want to change, if you can remember, we changed the text. So what was it? JLabel text. We want to set that text when the image has been received to image received. So that'll change the text up here from waiting for your image from client to image received. And now, of course, these wouldn't actually go into effect unless we added the, actually added the picture to the JFrame. And then what we want to do is also change the layout. Let's put it in the center. So it'll be in the center of the GUI, just like it is in the client. Now let's finish off with just the error handling. And luckily we don't have any anonymous classes like any other one. So all we could do is just add this to the method signature and everything will be fine. So this should be our final product. So now we've got the server on this side and the client on this side. And so all we have to do is we have to choose to run it from main. So get the server started first so the client can actually connect to it. Then we run the client, should appear over here as well. Excellent, so we have the send image to server button, we have the image in the middle, and so when we click this, it should end up over here, and voila, we got it here, and it says image received. All right, thank you for watching.